There were a lot of industrial troubles that were occurring in your company. Now this was about the same time that a BEA Trident went down at Staines and it was famously dis been discovered that graffiti had been scratched by the first officers on their table that read, Key, the captain, must die. The inquiry found that considerable friction existed between senior captains and junior pilots, such as you would have been around that time. Now, did you acknowledge this or experience any of this? Well, first of all, that Trident crash was BEA, mm. not BOAC, yeah, of course. Yes, of course. And we were separate entities mm. back then. Um, there is no doubt that a lot of the captains I flew with on 707s, who were ex wartime bomber command pilots, were fairly autocratic. Um, and some of them, I have to say, not really up to speed with flying a four engine jet aircraft. Having said that, many of them were very capable. So, you know, don't, don't get the impression that all these people were sort of slightly incapable ex-piston engine bomber pilots. No, they, no sure. Um, they were, they were, the, there was an element of that, but a lot of them were very good. And actually, funnily enough, one of my great regrets is that you know, these guys never talked about their war, very private. And I wish I'd had the temerity, if you like, as a sort of junior first officer to quiz them about their wartime experiences. Um, there's one chap I flew with, um, very colorful chap. Uh, I did my 747 conversion course with him and his party trick was to go out over the ocean in a 747 down to about 50 feet, head towards the Cliffs of Myrrh, and heave the aeroplane over the Cliffs of Myrrh. Well, that chap died not so long ago, five years or so ago, and there was an obituary to him. He was one of the dam busters. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Isn't that and I never, I, I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea. Well, I never. So, you know, that that is a regret I have. Um, I've sidetracked myself completely now. What, what was the original <laughs> question? Well, we were, <laughs> I was really trying to get at the, um, the oh, yes, pap the authority Papa India, gradient. I Papa that, India, I think, yeah, was the... That, that was it. It, and it was about the friction and the, the, the concern a, that between the young Hamble cadets yeah. uh, and these senior old pilots... Yes, it did. It, 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 there was some sort of industrial action. I don't think BOAC were involved in this. I think it was BEA that were oh, involved right, okay. in this particular spurt of an mm -hmm. industrial yeah. action. And there had been some massive row that this captain had had in the crew room. That's right. Before yes. going on to the flight deck. Mm. And he was in a very, obviously, in a very sort of agitated state. But partly state. because the senior captains were on one side and the junior first officers were on the other side of this dispute. Well, I, th I, I don't know who he'd had a row with, whether it was, it wasn't with, the, I don't think it was with the, the two first officers that were on that particular flight. I think he had come, come onto the flight deck and those two chaps were already present and correct doing checks and things. But suffice to say that the chap in the right-hand seat, as far as I'm aware, was a very, very junior um, uh, first officer. And the, he was being checked out by the more senior one. And this very irate, steamed up captain arrives and sits in the left-hand seat. And I think, quite frankly, the chap in the right-hand seat, this very junior chap was terrified of him mm. and, and and was just anxious beyond all belief to try and do do all the right things and the trident had a slight flaw in it i mean i i, th I think any airplane where you can retract the slats 
um, without sequencing it with the flaps is mm. has a has a massive design flaw. Yeah, so, which they acknowledged in the end. Which they acknowledged. Yeah, and yeah. so when the order was given to bring the flaps up to whatever the setting was, he went and pulled the slats in instead. Mm. With tragic results. And effectively results. stalled the aeroplane. Yeah, tragic results. With tragic results. But you, you got on well with your captains at this point, or there was the odd one? I, I, yeah, I mean, they, they were autocratic, but, mm. you know, they, they were perfectly easy to get on with. You, you didn't have the... You, you weren't sort of having rows with them or anything mm. like that. No, no, no. I mean, my main criticism was that many of them were very reluctant to give you any flying. <laughs> oh, really? And I think that probably partly stemmed from the fact that they weren't that confident in flying the 707 themselves, so they weren't quite sure, mm. you know, they weren't too happy to give the flying away. Interesting. Interesting. Now, you obviously love flying the 747. Uh, was moving to the VC-10 for your command course a bit of a disappointment? The 747 was magnificent, yes. As I always describe it as a gentleman's aerial carriage, it's the most benign and comfortable, splendid aeroplane. Um, I mean, here it is today, in 2019, still mm. flying. But I do know that Boeing um, bet the bank on it. They, uh, they built this aircraft with about 25 orders from uh, Pan Am and they needed to sell 400 to, make, yep. to save the company to break even. Yep. It was, it, it, they, they, they did took a real the risk, didn't they? they took they? a yeah. real risk. And, you know, here it is today still flying hmm. uh, 50 years later. It's a, it's a remarkable aeroplane. Uh, so going on to the VC-10, well, the VC-10 was a delightful aeroplane to fly. Um, so I'd gone from one very nice aeroplane to fly to another very nice aeroplane to fly. Yeah. So, and I deliberately, I could have gone back to the 707 if I'd wanted to. Okay. I had the choice, you know, which do you mm. want, Hutchinson, 707s or VC-10s? I thought, well, I've never flown a VC-10. Let's have a VC-10. And it was a delightful piece of kit. Uh, going uh, aside from my script here, what was the command course like in those days? Um, quite intense and pressured, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you um, I can't remember much about it. Um, I think the main thing I remember about it is all the trips I had to do under supervision before I was finally cleared as a captain in my own right. Yeah. And each one of those under supervision trips was a sort of make or break exercise, mm. um, potentially. So, um, you know, you, you had to be on your toes very much so. so. a tough course. It was a tough course, yes. Mm. Mm. Um, now, you say that uh, in your book that BOEC had always preferred the 707, but at the time it was a bit oversized and underpowered for many of the old Empire routes. Uh, wasn't it the case that they'd gone to Vickers and specifically asked them to build an aircraft to operate from high, hot airfields, such as Johannesburg? Um, but when they built the VC-10 for them, they kind of reneged on the deal and didn't really want to uh, buy it? I don't know whether they... Uh, my memory doesn't sort of encompass that, but what I do think certainly happened is that they started sort of trying to change the requirements that they wanted out of the aeroplane, sort of halfway through its sort of design... Uh, never a good and, idea. And it's never a good idea. <laughs> no. um, so it, it, it ended up not quite the aeroplane, I guess that it was that it was supposed to have been. But it was but that's, that was the that was the whole purpose of it. Mm. In the in the origins of it was the hot and high airfields. So, in Africa. so very much overpowered, a beautiful clean wing. It must, yep. I envy you having the opportunity to fly it. Yes, no, it was it was a very nice airplane to fly.